Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Taylor, and in today's video, we're gonna check out my most recent automotive mistake. So here it is. This is a 2005 Cadillac XLR. It's actually a pretty cool car, you know, from the looks of it. I mean, it, it looks sporty. It's got a retractable hard top. Just a neat car. I've always kind of liked the looks of these, but this particular car, I did not like so much when I saw it at the auction. And as you can tell, I've already had to dig into it pretty far. So to summarize this car, basically we had had our eyes on it at the auction for the past six or seven weeks, but every single time we tried to look at it or drive it, the battery would be dead, the keys would be missing, it would just be locked. Literally seven weeks went by and we never got to drive this car. And I went out of town a couple of weeks ago and my dad actually decided to bid on it and won it. And this is what we end up, ended up with. If you check out in the car here, it's actually, I mean, it's, it's a little weathered. We're going to clean all this up, but uh, mechanically, what really scared me was overheating almost immediately. I had fired this car up in the little sold lot that they have at our local auction, and um, we were kind of looking the car over. We're like, ah, it's a little rougher than we thought, but we can make a nice car out of it. And then I literally pull it up to the gates to check out of the gate. All of a sudden, the temperature's up over 220 degrees, and it had only been running for maybe 10 minutes. I hadn't even, hadn't even gotten it out of first gear. So I'm thinking, oh, shoot. I get down the road a quarter mile. It's up to 260, completely overheating, and I'm thinking, oh, no, this has a blown head gasket. So fortunately, the head gasket wasn't blown. It was actually the radiator. These are very common to leak. They're just a, a plastic tank on either side. So we bought a radiator, it was $98, not a big deal. It was quite a bit of work actually finagling it out of here, um, trying to keep the AC condenser intact without having to purge all the Freon out. So I managed to do that. So that's in here. But the next problem that it had was a bad P0300 misfire. It's called, it's a random misfired code. And then it also had a P024 code, which is exhaust cam timing on bank two. And it took me hours and hours to figure out what was wrong with this. But basically, it came down to the actuator in the camshaft, which I'll show you here in a second on the new part. But um, I was tracing wires back and actually found some really badly chafed wires in here. I thought that was my problem and um, turned out to not be. I, I kind of isolated all of these and then drove the car. The check engine light came back on. And then I decided I was going to test these magnetic actuators. These are ultimately what adjust the variable valve timing here. This is a dual overhead cam engine. It's called the North Star V8. Um, but anyways, I tested this one and I could hear a nice click. The magnet was working in there. This is an electromagnet. So I put a positive charge to this. That worked. I put a positive charge down here and I was not hearing any click. So I figured that was my issue. I go to take the actuator off, hoping to just replace the actuator. It's like a $55 part. And then I realized I had a much larger issue. This is the actuator that I pulled off of the car. And this is what actually ultimately changes the valve timing. This has a little um, magnet inside and it gets pulled into this electromagnet. And there's little, this is basically a piston with little holes in it and that ultimately creates more or less drag on the camshaft from what I understand to change the timing. And as you can see, it's broken right in half. The head of this thing broke free. Uh, it's just a little cast aluminum piece, broke free of here. So ultimately this head was just stuck inside of there and never actually changing the timing. And this was a problem that took me hours upon hours to actually diagnose. And then there's all these different little springs and a C-clip that hold this all together in this assembly that I'm gonna show you right now. So this is the piece that actually threads into that exhaust cam. We are, I had to buy this from Cadillac King in uh, Southern California. They were the only place in the United States I could find that actually had this part. It's been completely discontinued by GM, and obviously they don't make the North Star V8 anymore. So basically junkyards, or if you happen to find one on eBay, are your best bet. So anyways, you see that this, well, hopefully you can see in there, that this whole thing is held in with a lock ring, which is actually this piece right here. The lock ring sits on top of this spacer right here, which ultimately holds down this entire assembly there. Um, and basically this all sits in here like so, but since it broke, obviously all of it is completely trashed. 
Um, so anyways, what we're going to do today is remove this fully functioning um, actuator out of here. We're not going to deal with removing the cam from the car and, and installing this piece. We're going to just take that C-clip out of there and reinstall this piece, which is intact, and hopefully uh, restore the uh, variable valve timing on that exhaust bank. I got the piece out that we're going to be using, and as you can see here, this is how it's all oriented. Um, we've got the return spring, the spacer, or the retaining washer, and then the C-clip. And uh, basically, to get to that C-clip, you only have so much room from the head of this back to here, so you just have to use a set of straight um, little C-clip pliers. I tried this angled one, and it was kind of, the angled part was hitting at the top right here, so I wasn't able to use those, so I just used the straight ones and just was barely able to pop it out of there. But what's really going to be interesting is now trying to get this into the camshaft because uh, I'm going to try to do this without removing the cam cover. But as you can see here, this piece, actually shoot, I'm going to have to remove the belt um, or at least uh, take some tension off the tensioner to get a straight shot at this. You can see there it's hitting the tensioner, but once I do that, I've got to push this all the way in here and then somehow get that C-clip seated inside of that uh, little piece there that screws into the cam that we just removed this old one from. So I'll get started with that and let you know how that all goes. So you just throw a torque wrench on this uh, tensioner here and that'll give you just enough room that you need to slip that in. Um, so now, hopefully you can see in here, but I am going to try to compress that spring and then get the C-clip seated way into there. I've got an assortment of different screwdrivers here. I think I'm gonna start with the two small ones, see how it works. But ultimately, I'm going to push this in, and then I'm going to try to at least get the C-clip started inside of that uh, little cam snout. And uh, with any luck, if I can get it started, hopefully I can just push it right in there and um, kind of follow it all the way around. So stay tuned. All right, guys, well, that was incredibly difficult. I, this honestly probably took me an hour 15 to an hour and a half to get that simple little clip in there. Um, it just takes patience and approach to really get that thing seated in there and then follow it all the way around to pop it in, but it's finally in there. Um, I guess that's an example of maybe doing the right thing the wrong way. I'm not sure if I would have saved time taking all of this apart or not but at least I didn't have to go buy new valve cover gaskets and cam cover gaskets. So this is in. Now all that's left to do is RTV up this little outer piece right here before I put that um, electromagnetic um, actuator back on. And then I'll go ahead and clean up all these wires over here as well. And uh, we should be able to start this thing up and hopefully get rid of that code. All right, I've got the uh, actuator reinstalled. I went ahead and cleaned both of those surfaces with acetone and a little razor blade to get all the old sealant off. And then I threw some of that super blue RTV gasket maker on there. And I have the harness plugged back in. So I was just getting ready to uh, test both of these actuators again. I've got the uh, little jumper wire running to the positive on the battery. Um, each of these is grounded respectively. So um, this little exposed wire right here is gonna go to this first actuator. And that one's working, hopefully you can hear it. And then down low, we've got the actuator working there as well. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw some coolant in this now and give this thing a, a quick startup and see if we can get rid of those codes. I put the air box and the mass airflow sensor back on just so we wouldn't throw those codes while we're driving it. I obviously still have to assemble the whole rest of the front of the car with the bumper and everything from the uh, radiator job, but we're gonna go ahead. I got this uh, coolant topped off. We're gonna go ahead and start the car up and uh, take it for a drive. I already cleared the codes, so we'll uh, take it out and drive it and see if anything else pops up. And I had that P0300 and that P024. I'm kind of hoping that both of those are gone. Um, I went ahead, I also changed all the plugs and regapped all of them as well. The old plugs were pretty well haggard and uh, were pretty burnt up. And when we bought this car, the engine cover was missing and it looks to have a set of new coil packs over here, which is also the side that had that cam issue. So um, somebody was definitely tearing into this and got fed up and basically sent it to the auction. 
And I'm hoping by the end of today's video, we have solved all of that stuff. All right, so go ahead and pull this thing out. One super annoying thing about this car, I have to figure it out. Every time I go ahead and start it, it resets to the previous owner's presets for the steering wheel and the rear view mirrors. So it just every time I go and start this car up, I have to readjust all this stuff just even so I can get it out of the garage. But uh, anyways, we'll go ahead and take this thing for a cruise and hopefully we have some good news. All right. And it says low coolant. I'm assuming it just pulled a whole bunch more through that little uh, reservoir tank. So I'll have to fill that up again once we get back. This thing's got heads up display as well. It's kind of cool. Put the windows up. got some pretty good power I'm actually kind of surprised how quick this thing is but uh, I can already tell it runs a lot smoother um, I don't know time will tell here on this test drive but uh, before when I'd fire it up after about 10 seconds when it would drop down to a good idle rpm it would just start to shake like you could feel it through the whole car the exhaust would kind of rattle so I knew it had a, a misfire from the moment I ever started it up um, so that feels better now hopefully it's not just a a mental thing but um anyways we'll get this thing out on the highway real quick and do a a good run up and down actually before we get out on the highway i want to pull over and just look at this front end and make sure nothing fell out of there just tucked a couple of connectors in and uh, a few of those uh, little spoiler items Oh, looking good. Probably not the most legal thing in the world, driving around with no bumpers and no headlights and every wire hanging from the car, but we need to know if we fixed it. See that little green up there? That's the heads up display. So you actually see quite a bit of information there. It also shows you if your directional signal's on like this. Um, kind of a neat feature. This is car is basically like a Corvette actually. It's pretty cool, but uh, hopefully we can get this thing running right. Yeah, this thing pulls pretty good. All right guys, well I think we're in the clear. We just cruised down the highway a pretty decent distance. No check engine lights are on. Car still running smooth. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and park it back at the shop real quick and we'll go ahead and cycle the key, shut the car off and then turn it back on and see if anything pops up on that second key cycle. Um, but I think we're looking good. All right, let's shut this thing off. And then cycle the key once more. And it looks like we have no check engine light. So that is awesome. So based on what we just saw there, I'd say if you have a P024 code or a P014, anything associated with the variable valve timing, on either intake or exhaust on bank one or bank two. I definitely have a look at those actuators, test them like I did with a little jumper wire, see if you hear them click. And if they don't, you could also have a bad little uh, VVT piston, I guess is what they call it. Um, but anyways, that's that. All right guys, well that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it or found it helpful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up for me and consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see more automotive content like this. This Cadillac XLR is far from finished, but at least we know it's a decent car mechanically now. Um, it does not overheat. We've got a good radiator in it, and um, it seems to have no more misfire and no more cam position issues. So, uh, yeah, it seems to be a good runner and driver. I'm going to go ahead and get that front bumper cover installed again in the next couple of days. I've got a new insert for the bottom of it, as you can see over here. 
that uh, little mesh grill got completely blown out of the old one. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that, buff out the fog lights and reinstall this. And then um, really just some other detail work on the car. We're gonna finish up on the interior and whatnot. And then we'll probably do a final ride along and review video of this car when it's completely finished. Right now it's somewhat of a basket case. So uh, anyways, maybe I'll do some more videos of the work on the car, but we'll definitely do another one when it's finished. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next video.